Thank you, Mr. President. Such a delight for me to be here this evening. I have lost count. I don't know if this is my, what, 18th appearance uh, on this forum. Uh, and I want to compliment uh, Ailbia, President Jain Lapsia, and uh, uh, the wonderful team that he has for, for taking this association uh, forward. I think this is uh, one of its kind. I think in this country, this is the only association that looks after and advances the interests of uh, the liquid bulk market participants. Uh, therefore, uh, my, my compliments to you, and I'll, I'll stay to be uh, a part of this association for some more years, I guess. I often fancy myself as Dr. Ambedkar of Albia. You may be wondering why am I saying this. Dr. Ambedkar wrote India's constitution 60 years ago. I wrote Albia's constitution probably 17 or 18 years ago. <laughs> And India is growing rapidly. India is a very vibrant democracy. Uh, similarly, <laughs> LBI, I think, is growing, growing uh, very, very strongly uh, year on year. Uh, so compliments to you. And uh, it's such a privilege to be a part of this. And we've always received wonderful guidance from uh, our friend and well-wisher, Nadir Godrej. In, in fact, the entire Godrej family in the Godrej group. OK, let me start by talking about uh, VUCA world. We live in a VUCA world. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And all of us know that over the last three or four, five years, the world has been, has been facing this kind of uh, volatility, uh, particularly in the, field of, uh, in the field of economic growth. Is 2017 going to be any different? My sense is 2017 is not going to be any different. In fact, 2017 is likely to face a lot more volatility. Uh, than even 2015 and 2016, because I can see very clearly a number of event risks that the global economy uh, is facing and is likely to face in the next uh, three quarters that, uh, that, that we will see. Uh, but uh, before, before go, uh, going into that, I want to mention that the World Bank has come up with uh, a wonderful forecast for 2017, saying world economic growth will be, world GDP growth will be about 2.7% in 2017, much better than what it was, uh, what it was in 2016. But uh, one Mr. Donald Trump in the US wants the US economy to grow at 4% versus 2.5% of the previous year. Will that work? Will that happen? We don't know, but uh, he's promised tax cuts for corporates, is promised hundreds of billions of dollars investment in infrastructure development, et cetera. Based on the hope that he will fulfill his promise, I think the US economy, there's a huge amount of investment that is flowing into the US economy. The second half of the year will, of course, demonstrate to us, prove to us whether or not, whether or not uh, Mr. Trump is able to keep all his promises. And therefore, that's going to become a, a very critical period for the, for, the, for the global economy. From an emerging market perspective, very clearly, uh, there are challenges. Investment uh, climate is quite tepid. World trade uh, is not in favor of uh, uh, any, any significant growth for the emerging markets. And there are hardly any productivity gains that the world has seen. Therefore, uh, emerging markets are certainly facing a lot more headwinds. but Look at China. Uh, I, I, I read a wonderful expression that uh, China is now uh, slowing uh, rather moderately, and probably Chinese economy has, uh, uh, is, is beginning to bottom out because of the policies of, uh, of uh, the Chinese uh, government. Uh, I am only hoping that uh, this comes true. Uh, China is, of course, uh, in, with the US, the engine of global economic growth. Even if it were to grow at 6.5% in 2017, on a GDP value of $11 trillion, 6.5% will be a massive $700 billion plus addition to, uh, to its uh, GDP. But look at India. Our GDP value is $2 trillion. Even if we were to grow at 7.5% in 2017-18, sorry, we would still be adding just about $300 billion. Therefore, China is at a, in a very, very different scale altogether. Russia and, uh, uh, and of course, Brazil are also improving their economy because of a pickup in commodity, invest, in commodity prices, uh, particularly uh, crude oil prices. So this uh, is, is, is the overall situation. But don't forget, 
event risks. There are a series of event risks that the world is going to face. You have <clears throat> elections in Europe. We don't know what will, what will be the outcome of those elections and what will be the effect on European economic growth and on the Euro. Fed rate hike, one happened in March. Will a second one happen in June? We don't know. Uh, then you have the Trump-induced uh, uh, Trump volatility uh, in the market. What's going to happen to the crude oil? The U.S. production of shale oil is rising, but there is a production cut by OPEC and non-OPEC uh, producers. How it's going to pan out? You have monetary policies which are completely divergent. In some countries, interest rates are rising. In some countries, interest rates are falling. And in some others, interest rates are negative, in the negative territory. For, I think, complete uh, divergence there, currency volatility, people are talking about weather aberrations. Uh, my own sense uh, uh, is that 2017 is unlikely to see any significant uh, weather aberration. There is a huge amount of scaremongering uh, that, that I've seen and heard in the last uh, several weeks about, about El Nino and its effect, etc. There is still no credible, uh, confirmed uh, information or analysis or conclusion about, uh, about El Nino uh, as far as Southeast Asia is concerned, certainly uh, as far as India is concerned. For we still have to wait and watch for more credible data and, and better analysis and conclusion to come in. And therefore, the, the, the point I'm making is huge amount of risks, particularly event risks, that is going to characterize global economic growth in 2017. Within this context, liquid bulk market participants will have to, will have to see where their markets are growing, what is likely to happen to the crude oil market. My own sense is, uh, uh, my own sense is an expectation of correction in the crude oil prices because of an increase in shale oil production. The rig count in the US is rising for, the, for this quarter, April, May, June. Uh, 2017, this quarter, I won't be surprised if, if crude oil trades in the 48 to 52 dollar a barrel range. Uh, th th this is, uh, I won't be surprised to see this, uh, primarily because even the agreement between OPEC and non-OPEC countries could possibly flounder. Jan and Feb production of Saudi Arabia is beyond what they had agreed. Therefore, I think there are, there are frictions developing in, in, in that agreement between OPEC and non-OPEC. If I have to very quickly, Mr. President, talk about palm oil, which obviously a lot of people here are interested. I am not at all bullish on palm oil. I am, in fact, somewhat bearish on crude palm oil prices going forward. Uh, I, am, I, am, I am convinced looking at various drivers of the market, the correction should start by the end of April or even early May from current levels of something like 28, 2900 ringgits a ton. Uh, palm oil could first uh, come down to about 2,600 uh, ringgits by, by early to mid-May, and then probably in June fall below 2,500 ringgits. In fact, I saw Dr. James Fry's uh, forecast of 2,200 and ringgits, uh, 2,250 ringgits for CPO by the end of the year. I would think that will be accelerated. It will happen even earlier. It could happen in the third quarter of this year between July, August, and September. Uh, that's the kind of uh, outlook that I'm able to see. Uh, the markets are, uh, are likely to correct very, very sharply, much, much uh, uh, faster than the general expectation of a lot of people. Therefore, I think we need to brace ourselves for a slightly lower crude oil price and a sharply corrected uh, palm oil prices. Thank you very much. Good luck and God bless you all. Thank you.